Hi everyone, I hope you're all well out there. Um, if you haven't been here before, welcome to Rocket Rose Art. My name is Jeff. This video, um, we're going to be doing a little glass fusing project to make a um, Japanese style bowl. It's a smaller bowl but then slightly deeper in shape. It's a shape I actually quite like. It gives you um, a, a bit more visibility onto the outside of the bowl, whereas the shallower bowls, you can't really see what's on the outside of them. Um, so that's why I like the shape, but it, it's a little bit more problematic as far as getting the slump right, because it has reasonably deep sides. Um, but it's, it's um, I've used it before and it's worked out well, and we'll see how it goes this time. So in this project, we're going to use a glass fusing technique called stacking. I don't know that anybody else calls it much else. And it's where you take two small pieces of glass, you stack them one on top of each other, fuse it all down. It gives a really nice effect. I've used it in a number of pieces. And if you're careful about the colours you choose, um, it, I think it comes out really well. Don't forget, if you liked the video, I'd appreciate your support by giving me a thumbs up. Um, that would be appreciated. Share the video around, subscribe and turn on your notifications, that'd be great. And uh, down the bottom, you'll find a thanks button where you can give a small donation. And I sincerely want to thank anybody already that has given a donation. Anything that um, you give goes into a fund to replace that old um, tile saw of mine. So anyway, we'll get into this project. And of course, the very first thing is design, materials, and any special equipment you'll need. Oh. And don't forget any questions or comments put them in the comment section below and i'll try and answer all of your questions as best i can as far as design is concerned this is the plan i'm going to make a bowl and we're going to use this japanese style mold and uh, it's quite deep that one and we're going to use these colors we have 0142 which is lavender and 0303 which is dusty lilac and we're also, also going to use some opaque white which is 0013. We're going to cut a piece of each colour to fit that mould and then we're going to decorate each side separately with the opposite colour and a small piece of opaque white on the top, not opal white because I want that stark white colour. I had considered doing it this way so it's just the opposite colours so on this side it would have been the lavender plus the dusty lilac in the middle. But there's not enough contrast there for me. So I'm going to go with white in the middle and just have the opposites with the stack colours. If you're not familiar with the stack style, basically all it is is um, one piece of colour underneath, another one on top, usually reasonably contrasting colours. And a lot of places you'll see it, they just literally cover the piece with these stacks and I've done that myself and it's very effective but in this one I'm going to try and do it a little bit different. I think I'm just going to decorate sort of around the edges so that on this side here you'll see it around here and it'll be um, around the edge on the top with the middle left undecorated. The only extra equipment you may need is um, a grinder, some way of grinding the edges of this. The edges will be curved, of course, so um, I'll probably be using my little glass star grinder. As far as the materials, don't forget this is Bullseye 90 COE, so the firing schedule I'll give you is for that. You'll need to adjust it for whatever COE you're using and for the uh, variations in your kiln. I'll be fusing it on the shelf on thin fire paper and the mold will be sprayed with boron nitride. So you'll find the firing schedule um, over on my website and there'll be a link in the description to that page and that'll also include things like dimensions and I'll also list the colours and any other bits of information that um, I might mention in the video or I've forgotten in the video. Don't forget your safety, make sure you wear your safety glasses when you're cutting glass or grinding glass, anything like that and uh, probably a good idea to wear it all the time and um, then when you're cleaning up things like thin fire or anything like that make sure you've got a mask on so we'll get on now and i'll cut up the glass 
already got some of these small stacking pieces cut up but I will need some more in white So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay up a pattern on here. We're going to fuse that and um, then we'll uh, turn her over <laughs> and uh, lay up a pattern on the other side and then fuse that. Once it's all fused, um, I'll come back and on my grinder, I'll refine the shape so it fits our piece here a lot better because when I fuse all this up, it's going to get a little bumpy around the sides where the glass spreads out. So that's all done. Um, something I need to explain is that the glass on the base here is only two mil thick, so the two sheets only make that four mil. Um, and when I fuse this whole piece, all of this glass out here is gonna try and spread out and basically make that six mil thick. Some will, it'll spread towards the middle a bit and out, but the inside will stay still fairly thin now this is going to be the outside of the bowl and that's going to be the bottom so we don't need decoration on there but when i flip this over the lavender is going to be the inside of the bowl i've decided that i'm going to stack all over that which will increase the um, the middle section here the thickness of it and um, so we won't have such a difference between the thickness of the edge and the center here so I'll get that in the kiln now. We'll do a full fuse on this and try and flatten it out as much as possible. Then we'll flip it and do the other side. So we're finished with the full fuse and there are a couple of things I need to mention before we go on to the fire polish. Um, as you can see, the edges are quite wonky because the um, stack glass has pushed everything out. So they'll all have to be coal worked to fit the mould better. Um, it does have hazing on it, so it's going to have to be sandblasted and then fire polished. And right there, there's two little holes in that piece of dusty lilac. I will um, get two little pieces of glass, and uh, this is after I fire... Uh, after I've sandblasted it, two little pieces of glass, sit them on there, and then when I fire polish, I hope they'll uh, melt down enough to at least partially fill those holes, if not fully.
Okay, that's the uh, coal working done. I've ground the edges and sandblasted it and cleaned off all that scummy haze. Now, word about the mould. The mould may look uniform, but in fact, I put a measuring tape on this from corner to corner, and believe it or not, every corner is different, or I should say the sides are different. So orientation on this is quite important. And um, I did forget the orientation, so I've sort of mashed it up. I think it should be fine. Now, remember those two holes up there? They have got bigger through the sandblasting. And we've introduced some on the back here. It just seems to be that there are a lot of little bubbles just below the surface and the sandblasting takes off a fine layer of glass and exposes them. Now, I have somewhere here, here we are, I have a little piece of uh, dusty lilac that I'm going to sit on that. And when I um, fire polish this, hopefully, because it's so small, it's going to melt down into that and um, fill those holes. I say hopefully because it's not really going to be at a very high temperature. Um, a fire polish is considerably lower than a full fuse. And um, while I will try and keep it there until that flattens out, um, I do run the risk of introducing some more devitrification because that's going to be held at or within the temperature range that it will occur. So wish me luck on that one because I really don't want to have to um, do anything else with this and then have to try the follow fire polish again. There we go, the um, fire polish is finished and I'm just trying to find where that, um, I put that little piece but I can't really, oh there it is, right there I think, just slight difference in colour. Um, I did have to take that fire polish up uh, to I think it was 760 to get that to flatten out, um, but it has flattened out, very very slight difference in colour so you can't really tell it, you can actually see more difference in colour between some of these and these over here. Um, that just seems to be variation in the in the glass. So that now needs to go in the mould and we'll do our final slump. I like the shape of the bowl, but I think the um, main colours could have been a bit better chosen. I think there's not enough contrast between them. The white's fine, but the um, lavender and the dusty lilac need a little bit more contrast between those. The bowl's worked out. We had a couple of little issues. The holes on the bottom have closed up and that uh, hole on the top has closed up as well, even though I did have to take up the temperature a bit higher. Um, so that's all worked out fine. Anyway, tell me what you think. Let me know in the comments. Put all your questions in the comments. Um, if you like it, give me the thumbs up. Don't forget, a couple of suggested videos up there. The uh, subscribe button's right there. Hands behind me working. And until the next video, I'll say bye for now.